All right, here we go with our video for 10.3% composition and chemical formulas. First thing we're going to talk about is something new. It's the percent composition of a compound. And that's defined as the percent by mass of an element in a compound is the mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound. So it's just like any other real percentage, except it's done based upon the atomic mass. So the formula for percent composition by mass is the mass of the part, whatever part we're talking about, divided by the mass of the whole, times 100, because it's a percent. And that's going to be on reference table T in your reference tables. All right, so for example, when a 16 point Oh, I'm sorry, when a 13.60 gram sample of a compound containing only magnesium and oxygen is decomposed, 5.40 grams of oxygen is obtained. What is the percent composition of this compound? All right, so what we have to do is you have to figure the whole is the mass of the compound and the part, in this case, the oxygen part, is 5.40 grams. So when we set up our formula, the percent comp is equal to the mass of the part. We're going to talk about oxygen. So the percent composition of oxygen is 5.40 grams divided by the mass of the whole, which was 13.60 grams. 13.60 grams. And that whole thing will be times 100. So if I plug this into my handy dandy calculator, I get 5.40 divided by 13.60 equals 0 0.3970, but it's times 100, so it's 39.7 percent because I'm allowed three significant figures because one, two, three significant figures was the least precise here. So in this compound, oxygen is 39.7% of it and the magnesium, oh, actually just oxygen, the magnesium is the rest. So that's going to be 60.3% of it is magnesium. Okay, it's really a simple thing, just kind of plugging and chugging into the formula. So, sometimes you'll have to calculate the percent composition just based off a chemical formula. All right, so to do that, you have to follow these steps. Step one, calculate the masses of the individual elements. Step two, calculate the mass of the whole. That's what you've been doing. I mean, you've been doing a lot of both of these anyway, right? And then you divide by using the formula, right? Which is the part over the whole, and it's times 100%. Okay, so let's do an example. Calculate the percent composition of propane, C3H8. All right, so if we say carbon has a mass of 12.011, Hydrogen has a mass of 1.0079, I'll go with. Okay, and there's three carbon, so times three. Eight of these, so it's times eight. And the mass of the whole is going to be 12.011 times three. So the carbon part was 36.033. The hydrogen part, 1.0079 times 8, and I get 8.0632, okay, and now I can add these, and I get, and I get 44. 0 0.096 because I'm only allowed three significant figures because one, two, three. Okay. So the mass of the whole 
is 44.096 grams. The mass of the carbon is 36.033 grams. The mass of the hydrogen is 8.0632 grams. So now, to figure out my percent composition, I'm just going to divide. So hydrogen is going to be 8.0632 divided by 44.096. 8.0632. Divided by 44.096, which is going to give me 18.286%. And the carbon is going to be the rest, or I can just plug it in and say 36.033 divided by 44.096 equals 81.714%. Okay? It's a real simple process. The important thing is remembering the steps. Calculate the mass of the individual elements, calculate the mass of the whole, and then divide by using that formula. All right, the first two steps you've been doing a lot. All right, next thing that we're going to talk about are empirical formulas. And an empirical formula, it's kind of like an experimental formula, is the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Kind of similar to when, if we talk about, right, when we said beryllium, oxide and we said Be was 2 plus and oxygen was 2 minus so when we crisscross we get Be2 O2 okay and we say all right we have to reduce these so we just said BeO so it's kind of like that we're finding the simplest whole number ratio all right the empirical formula shows the kinds all right the kinds of atoms like here BeO and lowest relative count of atoms in the molecule of a compound. Okay, uh, one example would be hydrogen peroxide. Right, hydrogen peroxide has a ratio of a one-to-one -one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, making the empirical formula HO. Okay, we're going to see in a little bit the actual molecular formula is different than this, but the empirical formula, the lowest common denominator kind of deal, is just a one-to-one. -one. It's kind of like years ago, there's a special Cape Verdean rice called uh, Jag for short. It's a Jagacita. And years ago when my grandmother was teaching me how to make it, she was used to making it for a big family, right? So she would do four cups rice to six cups water. Okay. But that's really too much for my family. So what I would do is reduce it to the smallest whole number ratio and say, all right, let me go two to three. Two cups rice to three cups water. Now sometimes when I think of it, I think of it as one and a half cups water to one cup rice, but this wouldn't be useful for an empirical formula because it has to be the smallest whole number ratio because you can't have half an atom. Okay, so we're reducing it to the smallest whole number ratio. Okay, a couple of examples. Ethine, which is C2H2, the smallest whole number ratio would just be CH. Styrene, C8H8, sorry I wrote over that, C8H8. Right, so if I reduce this, it's going to be CH. If I reduce C2H2, it's going to be CH. So frequently you'll have an empirical formula that is many different uh, molecular formulas that kind of go along with it. All right, so how do you determine the empirical formula? All right, so here we have a compound is found to contain 25% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen. So step one, 
we're going to have to convert them both to moles. Okay? So the first thing you're always going to do is assume that you're dealing with a 100 gram sample. Okay? This way we can just say if the whole sample is 100 grams, then in this case we can say our nitrogen is going to be 25.9 grams and we can say our oxygen is 74.1 grams because we're assuming the whole sample is 100 grams. Okay, so next I need to convert to moles for both of these. So for nitrogen, right, I'm going to do what you want over what you got. I want moles. I've got grams, so grams for mole. Grams is going to go on the bottom. And boy, I'm getting old to see this stuff. And nitrogen is 14 point zero zero something seven. So I'm just going to say 14.0 for this one. 14.0 grams per mole. My grams will cancel. And I end up with 25.9 divided by 14. 25.9 divided by 14. And I get 1.85 moles nitrogen. All right, so oxygen, I'm going to say, do the same thing. All right, so it's one mole, 15.99 grams I'll go with, and I get 74.1 divided by 15.99 equals 4.63. 4 4.63 moles oxygen. Okay, so that was step one, figuring out how many moles of each. Step two, divide by the lowest number. So which is lower, 1.85 or 4.63? Dirt, it's 1.85. So when I take 1.85 and divide it by 1.85, I get one. So my formula is gonna be N1. Next I take 4.63 divide by 1.85 4.63 divided by 1.85 is equal to 2.5 so I have N1 oxygen 2.5 am I done? well not yet because are these both whole numbers right empirical formulas always be a whole number no so what happens, how can I make both of these a whole number? Well, what if I multiply both of them by 2? And then I end up with N2O5. Can't reduce this anymore, and they're both whole numbers. So in this case, the empirical formula was N2O5. Strongly recommend going back and watching that again, because there are a bunch of different steps. And there's no way you'll remember it if you just uh, keep on pushing forward. All right, next, finally, we're going to talk about molecular formulas. The molecular formula of a, the molecular formula of a compound is either the same as its empirical formula or it is a simple whole number multiple. So for example, right before I talked about hydrogen peroxide and I said the empirical formula was HO, but the and the empirical formula mass was 17.0 grams per mole because oxygen is about 16 and hydrogen is about 1, which is going to give us the empirical formula of 17. However, the real gram formula mass of hydrogen peroxide is 34. So how do we figure out the molecular formula? Well, we take the gram formula mass, 34.0, divided by the empirical formula, 17.0, which is going to be equal to 2. So we're going to multiply each of these by 2 and end up with H2O2, which is our molecular formula. All right, so let's do an example. Calculate the molecular formula of a compound whose molar mass is 60.0 grams per mole 
an empirical formula is CH4M. So our first step, we have to figure out the empirical formula mass. All right, so C, oh, there we go, C 12.011, H is 1.00794, 1.00794, but there's four of them, so times four, and N is 14.0067. Okay, so when I start plugging this all into my calculator, first thing I do, I'm going to do to make my life easy is 1.00794 times 4, and that plus 12.011 plus 14.0067 and I end up with a empirical an empirical formula mass we'll call it EFM is 30.049 grams per mole okay however the molar mass is 60 grams per mole so I'll take the 60 grams per mole, divide it by the 30.049 grams per mole, those will cancel, and I'm gonna get a multiplier of two. So that means I have to take my whole CH4N, multiply by two, and I get C2H, C2H8N2. All right, once again, go back and watch that again. This way, when we do practice them in class, you're going to be ready. All right, so that brings us to the end of our homework for 10.3, and I will see you guys in school.